but my name is Darren Cruikshank, and I was on Tough Live. I'm from Michigan. I fight out of Michigan. Mur Murder Mitten. Yep, look at that. But, uh, you know, Michigan's my home, so, I, you know, I don't feel like I'm going to be moving anywhere, time, any, anywhere soon. You know, as long as I can get what I need here, I probably won't go anywhere. To tell you the truth, my coach, my, one of my high school, or one of my college coaches, my wrestling coaches, summed it up pretty easy. He called me a cultured redneck. Okay, I'm from the city. Like I grew up in Inkster. Like it's not a good, not a good city. Like blah blah blah. It's five minutes from Detroit. Like, but for some reason I just like getting dirty and I don't exactly know how many fights I have at 55 I'd have to check my sure dog account but uh <laughs> it's like half I've got like half at 70 and half at 55 uh 55 isn't isn't that bad the 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 best thing that I like or the biggest advantage is people get shorter at 55 uh, everybody at 170 seems to be six foot tall and uh and huge um the, the weight cut to 55 isn't that hard. I, you know, as long as you manage your food and, and diet and, you know, and be responsible about that stuff, the, the, the weight cut's not that bad. I think I would be able to make 45 down the road uh, when I'm fighting for more money and, and I had to be strict on my diet. I think I could make it, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, Christiana would always grab my belly and said, this isn't yours. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, you're a 45 pounder. So, thanks, Christian. Marcel. So, all the other shows besides the first tough, the first tough, I think, was eight weeks. And all the other shows were only six weeks. We were 13 weeks in Las Vegas. Favor is like, hey, you know, I really want to get you out there, get the, the first win done. I want to match you up with, with Vic. You know, he, he's, he's young. He doesn't have a lot of experience. He's, uh, he's like a fish out of water on the ground. You know, he's all this and all this and all this. And I'm like, well, uh, you know, I'm kind of beat up from the fight to get in. But I'm like, you know, I'm thinking I take the first fight the first week and then I'll have like five or six weeks until I have to fight again. So I'm like, okay, you know, uh, let's do this. Let's fight. So, you know, I, the, the weight cut was easy because I just made the weight. So that, that was, and then that was another thing in my mind saying, okay, let's do this. I'll be the first fight. I just weighed in. I'm not, you know, I didn't have any huge injuries, but, you know, I was just in a, a fight. So I got lumps and stuff. But, um, so the weight cut was, was the easiest one I've ever had. Uh, uh, you know, I got ready. It was like, I didn't get to have a camp for it, you know, so I didn't. I didn't take a break, heal up, and then get ready again. So that could have had a factor, but I can't take anything away from Vic. You know, he uh, he threw a round kick that turned into a knee uh, to the face uh, at the right time. I think if I fight him ten times, I'm gonna beat him nine of them. You know, it's it's nothing against him. You know, he uh, he's a he's a tough dude, and it's just I feel like I have a lot more experience and a lot more skills. And I'm way better. Training with Faber and his guys, Chad Mendez, all those guys, they're they're at the top of their game. They're at the they're up here, right? And I'm still I'm just a baby in the sport. Like I just got into the UFC, you know. And training with them and and sparring with those guys and grappling with those guys, you know, it's it just shows where where I'm at and where I can go. You know, I mean, the sky's the limit for me. Um, I'm gonna go out. You know, go out to his camp coming up this week and uh, go train with his guys some more. But, you know, it's uh, it just shows me, like, that I've been doing the right things. And, you know, I might need to twerk and, and, and tweet my uh, my training schedule and, and, and habits and, and stuff like that. But what, what I've been doing is right, you know. And I've been doing it right here in my garage. So, all those big gyms. I try to like, okay, so say I'm fighting a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Obviously, he wants to get into the ground. So I'm going to do more training as far as is like take down defense and, and stuff off my back and stuff like that and getting out of submissions. But no matter what, I don't want to veer away from what's always worked for me and what's gotten me to that level. You know, why, you know, train for his best when I should be training for my best? 
You know, it. I. You always do jujitsu. You always. You always do everything. You can't stop doing one thing. Or when you're getting one, the other's getting away. Right. So you always got to be able to do everything and set it up. So I just. I just get ready. I just make sure myself is ready. You know, or myself. I, I make sure that that I'm ready. I. You know, if I feel ready, my cardio's up. My weight is good, and I'm ready to bang. You know, physically, mentally. Uh, ready to go in there for battle that you know is you can't do much more so I just concentrate on myself I doesn't matter if they change me opponent or or whatever I train for everything I'm, I'm ready to go so. this is how I've always felt about this sport and you know this isn't a fight to me this is this is entertainment yeah it's a fight and it's a sport but number one you're an entertainer so if the fans don't like you, then you're not going to have fights. You could be the best fighter in the world, go out, take someone down and submit them real, right, right away, and the fight's over. That's boring. People want to see a battle. You know, it's just like professional wrestling. Like, you got to have characters. You got to, there's always a hero. There's always a villain. You know, growing up watching you, or, uh, you know, WWF and all that stuff, you know, I think that helped me out in my career. Um... I need to take more speech classes and stuff and be able to talk in front of the camera and stuff. Maybe I'll be an actor someday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an entertainment. So, you know, I was taught how to throw that stuff. And, and you know, and there's, if, if you know how to set it up and you know how to use it, there's no danger in it. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty athletic person. And that's probably why I get away with doing a lot of stuff I do. Uh, and the fans like to see it, so... As far as relationships in the house, I got pretty close with everybody on my team. You know, I had guys fighting each other on the team later down in the in the tournament, and you know, just those guys going at it didn't split us up. They still trained together. They still practiced. Yeah, they didn't drill or. We got really close. Me. We all got you know, Ogle, me and Ogle, seen eye to eye on a lot of things as far as like technique and and uh, philosophy as far as fighting so we got pretty close and then Cristiano uh, we got close because he's never cooked for himself so like he would follow me around like this little dog like what are you making today blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so like if I didn't cook then he didn't eat or he made some weird thing that he didn't know was going on but after a while he started picking up on how to, how to cook steak and stuff like that so uh, and then, you know, he, he helped me out with, with my jiu-jitsu, and I helped him out with his striking, and, and we made a good relationship. As far as Twitter and Facebook and communicating with the outside, we actually never got to type in our own Twitter or type in our own Facebook. We basically wrote it on a piece of paper, handed it to a person, they took it, got it approved, and then they would put, put it up on Twitter. We never got to see what people were tweeting us. We never got to see uh, who was messaging us and, and, and everything like that. So we were able to talk to the outside, but we weren't, we weren't getting any feedback. And it was basically all random. Like, you know, what do you want to tweet today? Oh, um, blah, blah, blah. And, we, I mean, there was like a, a company that would come in and like twice a week and we would get to tweet during fights and like Tuesday, our day off. Um... But other than that, we, you know, there was no communication. I mean, sometimes the coach, coaches would slip you their cell phone and you'd be like, oh, yeah, look on their cell phone. And then, and then uh, the police would come in and, and, hey, put your cell phones away. You know, you're not supposed to do that. You know, we, they'd get yelled at and stuff like that. It was pretty strict. You know, they weren't supposed to tell us. Nobody was supposed to tell us anything that happened on the outside world. You know, it was uh, supposed, you know, we are supposed to be confined in this this, uh, this house and this training facility, and that's it. We're not supposed to hear any news. You're not supposed to talk to the camera guys. I actually got fined for talking to the camera guys. And the funny thing as far as fines and stuff, the red team did not get fined at all. They just hung out in the house and did nothing wrong. Like, they're little angels. The blue team, we got four fines. Chessa got fined. Aquinta got fined. I got fined. And Ogle got fined. Uh... Chessa and Aquinta got fined for getting shit-faced, and Aquinta jumped into the pool like three times and almost tackled uh, uh, one of the camera guys. Uh, 
he jumped in the pool with it with his microphone on, which is like five thousand dollar microphone. Oh, wow. So he destroyed a couple of microphones. A Quint or er, uh, Chessa ran away and was not putting his microphone on, so we got fined for that. We're supposed to wear it all the time. So. Me and Ogle got fined for making fun of some of the camera guys, and it, it was like an inside joke. I wasn't actually making fun of him. It was something we were saying to everybody. So, like when someone would get injured like, oh, my back's hurting today, or someone would complain about something, we'd go, oh, you know what's really good for, for your elbow? Uh, and they'd be like, what? Lick my butthole. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. And I seen this camera guy, or he was a boom guy, he would always have that boom, you know, like the speaker guy. He'd always like be stretching his back, and I was talking to him, I'm like, what's wrong with your back? What's, you're, you all right, man? He's like, yeah, I just got these real bad problems. He's got to carry this battery thing. It's like, yeah, this thing's heavy. I'm like, you know what's really good for back pain? And he goes, what? I'm going to lick in my butthole. <laughs> I thought it was funny. They didn't think it was funny, so I got fined. Ogle, Ogle got something similar.